Dear students, in this session, we are going to discuss blood and lymph and their immunological properties. We know blood and lymph are circulatory fluids in animal body having both immune and circulatory functions. Blood contains red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and plasma and it flows through blood vessels. Lymph flows through lymphatic vessels and it contains white blood cells in a plasma-like fluid. In this image, we can see the circulatory system through which blood flows. Then, the second image is the lymphatic system and the third one shows the interrelationship between these two systems. So, through the circulatory system, blood flows through arteries, veins and capillaries and their flow is forced by the pumping action of heart. From heart, blood flows through arteries and then through capillaries into various tissues and then back into the heart through veins. In the lymphatic system, lymph flows through lymph vessels. Their movement is forced by the squeezing movement of the body's muscles. The muscular movement forces the lymph through the lymph vessels. The lymph movement or the flow of lymph is unidirectional. It is due to the presence of a series of one-way valves along the lymphatic vessels. These one-way valves ensure that lymph flows in one directional, that is, it ensures a unidirectional flow. So how the lymph and blood are connected? The two systems are interconnected. The lymph originates from blood. While blood flows through the capillaries, a fluid seeps out from the capillaries into the interstitial space between cells in tissues. This interstitial liquid or the fluid will be collected by lymph vessels and then flow through the lymph vessels. They reach the lymph nodes and finally reach back into the blood circulatory system. The lymph reach back the circulatory system near heart. The largest lymph vessel, the thoracic duct, carries the lymph back into the left subclavian vein near the heart. Now we are going to discuss blood. Blood helps in the transportation of oxygen, nutrients and metabolic waste from and to different parts of the body. It is composed of blood cells suspended in a fluid known as plasma. Plasma is more than 90% water and it contains various molecules such as proteins, ions, glucose, hormones, etc. There are various types of blood cells and they are mainly red blood cells or erythrocytes, white blood cells or leukocytes and platelets or thrombocytes. These are the three major types of blood cells. So blood is the various blood cells suspended in a fluid that is plasma. So these are the various cells present in blood. Blood contains plasma, red blood cells, and various white blood cells such as eosinophil, monocyte, neutrophil, lymphocyte, basophil, etc. And also blood contains platelets or thrombocytes. Now we will discuss the various cells in the blood in detail. The first one is erythrocytes or RBC or red blood cells. The RBCs have a biconcave disc-like shape and they carry hemoglobin, an iron-containing protein. The presence of hemoglobin provides blood its characteristic color, the red color. Hemoglobin helps in oxygen transport. RBC have a lifespan of about 120 days. The next type of cells present in blood are thrombocytes, which are also known as platelets. The platelets have a round or oval shape and they are termed so. They are termed as platelets because they look like small plates. The main function of platelets is 
to aid in the process of coagulation or blood clotting. When due to any damage to the vessels, the blood cells will escape and at that time the platelets will release factor 10 and this factor 10 in the presence of calcium react with a particular blood protein known as prothrombin and as a result the prothrombin will be converted to form thrombin. The thrombin then will convert a blood protein fibrinogen to form fibrin. The fibrin will form a mesh like fibrin cloth which stop bleeding and as a result the blood flow can be controlled or the blood flow from the capillaries into the outside can be stopped. Now we are going to discuss about the third type of cells present in blood that is leukocytes. They are also known as white blood cells. There are different types of white blood cells in blood, each type with different functions. The main function of WBCs is to protect our body from pathogen invasion. They are the main mediators of immune system. They provide us immunity. There are two main types of WBC. They are granulocytes and agranulocytes. We will discuss the granulocytes first. The granulocytes are also known as polymorphonucleocytes. They have several small granules within the cytoplasm and also have a multi-lobed nuclei. They are termed as granulocytes due to the presence of granules in their cytoplasm. There are three types of granulocytes. The first one is neutrophils. Neutrophils are phagocytic cells. The second type of granulocytes are eosinophils. The eosinophils function in defending our body against allergens and parasites. The third type of granulocytes are basophils. The basophils help to defend parasites and they release histamine and heparin. So, there are three types of granulocytes and they are neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils. Now we are going to discuss the agranulocytes, the second category of leukocytes. These are also known as mononuclear leukocytes. They lack granules. Their cytoplasm does not contain any granules. There are two types of agranulocytes. They are the lymphocyte and the monocyte. The monocytes migrate into the tissue and in tissue they will transform to form macrophages. Both monocytes and macrophages are phagocytic cells. Coming to lymphocytes, there are three different types of lymphocytes. They are T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte and natural killer cells. And these cells are the key cells in immune response in our immune system. So these are the various WBC or white blood cells present in our body. They are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, natural killer cells and monocytes. Now, we will see the various cells present in our blood. They are RBC or red blood cells, platelets and various WBC or white blood cells that are monocyte, lymphocyte, eosinophil, basophil and neutrophil. Till now, we were discussing about the cellular part or various cells present in blood. Now, we are going to discuss about the fluid part or the plasma. Blood plasma contains the following. It is mainly water and several molecules are suspended in plasma such as inorganic substances like calcium, potassium, sodium etc. Various organic molecules such as glucose, amino acids, fats, cholesterol, hormones etc. Plasma also contains various waste products collected from the tissues such as urea, uric acid, ammonia, creatinine etc. And there are various plasma proteins present in the plasma and they are serum albumin, serum globulin, fibrinogen and prothrombin. So what is serum? What is the difference between serum and plasma? Serum is plasma minus clotting proteins. If we centrifuge 
blood mixed with any anticoagulant. We will get three layers as shown in the first or the leftmost image. There will be blood plasma in the upper layer. And the lower layer, we can see the red blood cells sedimented together. And in between, there is a buffy coat, which is mainly various WBCs and the platelets. But if you are going to centrifuge the blood without adding any anticoagulant, then the blood will clot. There will be formation of blood clot. And upon centrifugation, we will get two layers. The clot will sediment or settle down at the bottom. And the upper portion will be the serum. So, serum is obtained by centrifuging the blood as such. Why? The plasma is obtained by centrifuging blood mixed with any anticoagulant. So, plasma contains all plasma proteins. The serum contains all plasma proteins but not the fibrinogen. The fibrinogen is already used up to form the blood clot. So, serum is plasma minus fibrinogen. Now, we will discuss the various functions of blood. The main function of blood is to supply oxygen and nutrients to various tissues and organs. Nutrients such as glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, etc. and also oxygen is supplied to various tissues and organs through the blood flow. Blood aids in the removal of metabolic waste such as carbon dioxide, urea and lactic acid from tissues. Another function of blood is the coagulation of blood. The coagulation of blood prevents blood loss in situations where the blood vessel is broken. In case of any blood vessel damage, there will be formation of clot or blood will coagulate to prevent blood loss from our body. Another important function of blood is the transport of hormones and signaling molecules from one part of our body into another part or different tissues. And also the blood flow maintains homeostasis throughout our body. Another major and important function of blood is their immunological function. Blood helps in the circulation of white blood cells and also antibodies throughout our body. So, the circulating WBCs and antibodies will help to detect the foreign particles or foreign antigens and also they will combat, they will destroy the foreign antigens or the foreign invaders thereby protecting our body. So, the blood is having a pro major immunological function by providing a circulatory system through which the WBCs and antibodies are circulated throughout our body. Now, we will discuss about lymph. What is lymph? It is the clear fluid that originates from blood. It is a clear fluid that comes from blood plasma. Lymph contains water, proteins, salts, lipids, etc. And also, there are white blood cells present in lymph. The lymph flows through the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system consists of various lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels. Let us look into how lymph is formed. Lymph is formed from the interstitial fluid. Lymph is mainly composed of interstitial fluid, which is a fluid that lies in the interstitial spaces of cells and tissues. So from where this interstitial fluid comes? In this image, we can see arteriole or arteries in red color, venule or veins in blue color, and the arteries and veins are connected through an interconnecting meshwork of capillaries, blood capillaries. So when the blood circulates under pressure through the blood capillaries, the fluid part of the blood, it is known as plasma, it will seeps out from the capillaries into the tissue space. The fluid part will seep through the thin wall of the capillaries into the surrounding tissue. This fluid is known as the interstitial fluid. A major portion of this fluid, the interstitial fluid, will return back to the blood through the capillary walls itself, but a portion will remain within the tissue spaces between the cells and this remaining interstitial fluid, they will flow through 
a network of tiny lymphatic capillaries. So the interstitial fluid which is collected by the lymphatic vessels which are shown in green color in this image and this fluid is now termed as the lymph. From the tiny lymphatic capillaries, the lymph flows into a series of progressively larger collecting vessels known as lymphatic vessels and they reach the lymph node. There are different lymph nodes located at different parts of our body like cervical nodes, axillary nodes, inguinal nodes, etc. So, the lymph reaches the lymph node through lymphatic vessels known as afferent lymphatic vessel and the lymph leaves the node, the lymph node through larger efferent lymphatic vessels and eventually they will drain into the circulatory system at the thoracic duct or the right lymphatic duct. This is the largest lymphatic vessel, the thoracic duct. It is the largest lymphatic vessel and it empties the lymph into the left subclavian vein near the heart. So the lymph reach back into the blood circulatory system. The lymph leaving the lymph node will be richer in lymphocytes. It will be more immunologically rich. Lymph formed in the digestive system is known as chyle. It have various dietary lipids collected and it looks milky white because of its high lipid content. Now, what are the primary functions of the lymphatic system? It drains and returns the interstitial fluid to the blood. It absorbs and returns lipids from the digestive system to the blood. And also, lymph, the lymphatic system has several important immunological functions. They are, it filters the fluid of, of, out of pathogens, damaged cells, cellular debris, cancerous cells, etc. The lymphatic system transports white blood cells to and from the lymph nodes and bone marrow and also it transport antigen presenting cells to lymph nodes where the immune response will occur. Now what are the differences between blood and lymph? While blood is reddish colored, lymph is pale yellow in color. RBCs are present in blood while it is absent in lymph. The blood circulatory system is having a bidirectional flow while the lymphatic system is having a unidirectional flow. The blood flow is very rapid while the lymph flow is very slow. The blood have relatively low leukocyte count while there are higher levels, higher counts of leukocytes, lymphocytes, white blood cells in lymph. In blood, platelets are present while the platelets are absent in lymph. So, we were discussing about blood and lymph. We discussed their components and also the immunological functions of blood and lymph were discussed. Thank you so much for listening.